Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, in the, uh, the previous uh, meetings, uh, we defined beta, and we said beta is a measure of systemic risk. Okay? Uh, today, uh, we are going to estimate beta and to see how the, uh, the beta for portfolio is calculated. Uh, beta could be estimated using Excel. So the student in the, uh, in the financial analysis we, uh, will see how beta is calculated based on the Excel. Or financial calculator, or readily obtained from va various uh, sources of the internet. If we go to, the, uh, to Yahoo, if we open Yahoo, and as you see, this is Yahoo, and uh, this is for IBM. If you look at the, if you look at the uh, the data for the uh, for IBM, here is the closing price, and this is the open price, this is bid price, ask price, and this is beta. Beta is equal to 0.65. Um, so 0.65 means that IBM has lower beta. If the, if the market increased by 10%, the, uh, uh, the IBM would increase, points, uh, or let's say, 6.5%, because uh, the beta is 0.65. If you want to calculate beta by using Excel, just go to the historical prices, okay? Like this. And this is the historical prices for beta. Take the closing price. This is the closing price. Then download the, uh, the S&P. So this is the uh, IBM. You estimate the return of IBM, then you estimate the return of S and B 500. Why S and B 500? Because S and B, where is the IBM is listed, yeah. it is listed in New York Stock Exchange, and S and B is the index of the New York Stock Exchange. You calculated the R of IBM and the R of S and B, then you estimate the slope. I will show you how it works. The slope of the return of S and B 500 uh, divided by the return of uh, IBM. Okay. So we have beta obtained from Yahoo Finance. For Apple, Dell, HP, uh, American Electric Power, Duke Energy, and uh, Center Point Energy. What we observe, if we obtain beta from Yahoo Finance, we have these betas. But if we obtain betas from the uh, MSN, we have these betas. What we observe in this, we have different betas from different uh, data sources. Okay. Uh, this is a problem if we are uh, obtained the ready beta from the uh, different sources. Why? Because they uh, use different period of time in estimate beta. <coughs> what we observe uh, in addition to the change in beta between the Yahoo Finance and Microsoft money, the computer beta is greater than the utility beta. Look at here. Apple is 2.9. Dell is 1.80. HP is 1.27. But if look at the utilities, compared with the computer and software, we have lower betas. Why? Because computers and softwares are working in the high-risk environments compared to the Utilities. utilities. Utilities like the energy companies. So the demand in the energy companies is lower than the demand <coughs> or, the, or, or the risk. The companies working in the computer and software is subject to higher risk yes. than the
the companies working in the energy industries. And this is why beta in computers and software is greater than the betas in the utilities. Okay? Any question? Sure? Okay. So if we look back at the table 8 one, um, we observe that the utilities have lower betas. <coughs> How we calculate beta uh, by using formulas. Okay? Um, if we have If we have observation about the return of IBM or the return of Dell and the return of markets, market is obtained from S&P 500s, we have the return here and return here. Okay? So we define beta is the change of the rate of return because the change in the, in, in the, in the market return. Or in other way, the sensitivity of the return of Dell from the return or from the change of the market return. If we represent this by using chart, if we are using chart, so we have this chart. This x-axis is the market return, and the y-axis is the Dell. So this is Dell, and this is market. the market return. OK? So now, the beta is the slope of, of this axis. And how we can calculate this slope the slope of this area is calculated by using tan theta. Tan theta is the rise divided by the run. Okay? This is, we can estimate this by using Excel sheet. Just put in the Excel, do slope, then put the RM, then our eyes, you will get the beta. This is in the, in the Excel sheet. Tan, tan theta. Theta. This is theta. Rise divided by run. Run. المقابل عن مجاور. هذا توجيه ولا لا؟ Just to remind you. If this is for Dell, this is for Dell. If we have another company, let's say if we add uh, energy, for instance, energy company, and we have the observation, we will combine the R of energy company with the RM, and we will have like this. What we observe the slope of this is higher than the slope of this. It means the beta of del is greater than the deep beta of... Look at the, the slope. The slope is... So the slope of the tan theta here, the theta here is less than the, te the theta here. Theta is, is zawiya. So the theta here is less than the theta here. So the slope and the beta of R energy is less than the slope of uh, of Dell. Okay. This is by using the chart. Okay. Huh? <laughs> the slope is equal to tan theta. Tan theta. Tan theta. 
اوكي رايز ديفايد باي ران ار ام ار ام But this is for the, the beta for the uh, individual stock. Ri, the return of the stock. Ri. Ri divided by Rm. Uh, in, the, in the lab, I won't show you how we calculate the, uh, the beta. OK? Uh, for the portfolio, if you want to calculate the beta for portfolio, as we define, the beta of portfolio is the <coughs> contribution for each stock in the portfolio, okay? So, sorry? The beta of portfolio is equal the proportion of beta for each stock. So it is W1 times beta of the stock number one plus W2 beta two plus WN beta N. Okay? Mm -hmm. So this is the beta of portfolio. For instance, if we have like this example in here, uh, we have portfolio includes uh, Apple, Dell, <coughs> HP, and let's say the R of Apple, or let's say the beta of Apple, Beta of Apple is 2.5, for Dell 1.70, for HP is 1.28. Now, and the uh, we invest, we invest. In let's see, we invest I uh, two thousand dollar in Apple and two thousand dollar in Dell and $1,000 in HP. So what is the beta of the portfolio? OK? So now, just only to, to calculate the, the weight, we want to know the weight because to apply the, we have beta here, but we don't know the weight. The weight is 2,000 divided by 5,000 because we invest 5,000 in the portfolio. And the 5,000, 2,000 in Apple, 2,000 in Dell, 1,000 in HP. So 2,000 divided by 5,000 is 40%. Okay? 40%. And here is 40%. And here is 20%. Is it right? Okay? Now, the beta is very simple. Just this one, why this one? The beta times the, the weight. OK? So 40% times 2.5, 40% times 1.7, 20% times 1.28. So you just sum the. Very simple. OK? Yes? No? Sajida, you are right. Yes, pay attention, please. OK? And you just have the, the sum of, of beta. What is the result? 1.93. OK. Uh, let's ask you a very little question. If I want to increase the beta of this portfolio, what can I do? If I want to increase, so the beta is now 1.93. If I want to increase the beta of this portfolio, because as we said, the, the higher the beta, the higher rate of return. So if I want to increase the beta for this portfolio, so what can I do then? 
Sorry? The investment. The investment. So increase what? Yes, increase Dell. Dell? Or increase Apple? Yes, we will increase the proportion of Apple because it has higher beta than the, uh, the portfolio beta would increase. Yes, you are right. But if I want to decrease the beta, the, the portfolio of beta, what can I do then? Or HP. So I will increase the proportion of or the contribution of Dell. So let's go back to our definition of beta. Beta is this is measure of systematic risk. And measure the contribution of each security in the systematic risk. So as we observe in this example in here, we observe that if we increase the, the higher beta, the, the market port portfolio beta or the, the, portfo the, uh, the beta of portfolio will increase. So this is increase uh, because the increase of the proportion of the higher beta. If I want to lower the beta, I will look at which is the lowest one, then I will increase the, the contribution of the lower betas. Okay? Any question here? No questions. Sure? Yes. When? Yeah, you, you go to the, where is, yes. You increase the contribution of the lower beta. Okay? Okay, so this is typically what the, the formula is the, the proportion of portfolio investment in assets one, beta of asset one, the proportion of asset two, beta, la, till the uh, look at the W and beta. M. Okay, uh, consider this example here, it's similar to our, our example. Consider a portfolio that is comprised of four investments with betas equal. So we have four investments. Uh, four investments, 1.5, the, the beta is 1.5, 1.75, 1.8, 1.9, 1.10, 1.11, 1.12, 1.13, 1.14, 1.15, 1.16, 1.17, 1.18, 1.19, 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25
Now, the security market line and the CAVM, the capital asset pricing model. Uh, what is the security market line? According to the efficient market hypothesis, according to the efficient market hypothesis, all securities must be represented in the, in the security market line. So this is the security market line. If we have stock A, for instance, if we have A, B, C stocks, these stocks should be represented in the security market line. What is the justification behind the security market line? The security market line is based on the idea that each item or each security reflects the risk and return. Yeah. Okay, so this is the risk axis and this is the return axis. All securities should be represented in the security market line. There is a trade-off between risk and return. and return. This is according to the efficient market hypothesis. Uh, the proponents of the efficient market hypothesis think uh, the, uh, there is a trade-off between risk and return. Yeah. However, the inefficient market hypothesis think there is no security market line uh, or the securities are not represented in the security market line. So there is this mispricing. For instance, if you look at A according to the inefficient market hypothesis, a is mispriced uh, against the assumption of security market hypothesis built on the idea of the efficient market hypothesis. But the assumption of the inefficient market hypothesis think the market should not be represented in the security market line and the securities are mispriced, at least in the short term. Okay, so this is risk and this is return. If we look at here, if we start from this, this, this place, this area, this is risk-free. If we start in here, this is risk-free. So the risk is equal zero. The risk is zero, and the risk, of, oh, the risk of risk-free is let's say is six percent. The risk is zero. At risk zero, the return is 6%. Yeah. OK. Let's move to the top. Let's move to the top. Let's look at A. If we look at A, then as we see, this is the risk-free area. OK. And this is the unsystematic risk. This is systematic risk and this is unsystematic risk. Because of the systematic risk, we are compensated by 6%. Okay? Because of we are holding higher risk, look at here. We are holding higher risk. This is from zero, now we hold higher risk. <coughs> The markets compensate us with this risk, or with ri this return. And this is called risk premium. OK? How we estimate A, to estimate A, so RA is equal to the RF, this RF, we know what is RF. Plus, because this is located in the line, so yeah. we want to know the, the slope of this line. So beta, the slope of this line is the difference between the RM 
this is Rn minus Rf. The market return minus the risk free. This is the market return. Look at here. This is the market return. And this is the risk free. So we have this area. This, is, this area is the risk premium. Look at in the chart. This is in the red line. The market return, all of A, because it is located in the market return or in the security market line, minus the RF, because the RF is re reflected the systematic risk. So we have only this. So this line minus this line, we have this line. We call this line is risk premium. Based on the equation in here, this is risk premium. This is beta is the slope. This is the RF is in A. So the return of A is equal to the risk free the plus beta times the risk premium. OK? This equation known as cap M, capital asset pricing model. This equation is known as the capital asset pricing model. Okay. Any question? No? Yes? No? Okay. So if we invest in in two companies, or let's say in two securities, if we invest in two securities, in A, we consider A as a risky asset. OK? We consider A as risky assets. And let's see why. Why is risk-free assets? This is why. Why is risk free? Now, one question. What is the beta of risk free? What is the beta of the risk free assets? Zero, because it is zero. So, is zero. What is the return of the risk free? Yes, six percent. Now, if we invest our, uh, if we form portfolio, look at this portfolio. If we invest in portfolio, half of this portfolio is risky assets. And half of it is risk free. OK? So beta here is 0. And beta here is, let's say, 1.2, for instance. OK? So the return of portfolio, or the expected return of this portfolio, is equal to the risk free plus the W, the weight average, of RM minus RF. The weight average of RM minus RF, this area. Why exclude the, the weight average of RF? Because it is zero. OK? So the formula was like this. RF plus W of RM for the beta plus W of 
Rm minus Rf. This is for the risky assets. For this is for non-risky assets. For the non-risky asset is equal zero. So we leave it. We have only this equation. Okay. We will see the, uh, the equations. Uh, this is the equation. Look at it. Look at the equation. Okay. So we explained the uh, the cavern. Uh, look at the expected return of the portfolio. Is the risk free plus the way of of the market portfolio, uh, the return of the market minus R. Okay, we explain this chart. Okay, so this is the six percent is the risk free, and this is the market return, and just we calculate the beta in here. This is what what this area, the risk premium. Okay. And how we calculate beta? Just to calculate beta, just to remind you, beta is tan theta, yes? Yeah. Tan theta, which is rise divided by run. This area divided by this area. Okay? You can do it in, in Excel, or you can do it in... Huh? Ah, okay, yes. <laughs> uh, because it, uh, it is in here, slope rise divided by run. Yeah. This is the, the slope of this. Okay. The slope of this angle is equal to this area divided by this area. You don't know. Listen. Where is the where is the rise? Is in here? No. This is the rise. The The run is the So this area divided by this area. So it is eight percent. This. Uh, sorry, 6 to 8% is around something here. Yeah. 0.03 divided by 0.6. This is 0.6 and this is 0.3. Okay? So this is 0.6 and this is 0.03. Uh, to just divide this, divided by this, you get the slope or you get the beta. Okay? What is the return of this portfolio? This is the beta of the portfolio. What is the return? This is the return. Is in this re the return of the of the portfolio? Okay. Now, go back to our idea. If we if we have option to invest one hundred percent in the risky or in the risk free portfolio what is the beta of this is equal to zero okay if we decided to add up risky asset to the portfolio by say for instance 20 percent so this is this is risk portfolio risk free and this is risky yeah so, how beta will be affected? Yes, beta will increase. Okay, if we add more risky assets, the beta increase. If we look at R, R for instance is 6%, it will increase. so it will increase. And so on. If we invest all our money on the risky assets. Return increase. Return increase. 
and there is no beta with, with zero. Yeah. Okay, look at what I said in here is reflected in this chart. Okay, we have two options. When I talk about market portfolio, market portfolio is, this is the market portfolio. This is the market portfolio. Any stock located in the market is considered as a market portfolio. We are invested in all of the securities are located in the market and except with the risk free. So this is risky, risky assets and this is risk free assets. Okay, so now we invest on only in risk free assets. 100% of our money is invested in risky free assets. Then the expected rate of return is 6%. Beta will be and zero. beta is zero. zero. Okay, because if we apply the equation, the beta of portfolio, W of beta of risky assets, risky, plus the beta of risk free. So here, the risk is zero. zero. We don't have. So and here, the risk free is, the beta is also zero. So the beta of the portfolio is equal to zero. Okay, so we have this. Now, we add up 20% to the, to the portfolio. So this is 80% risk free. Beta portfolio is 0.20. Then expected return is higher than the previous one. Yeah. Now, we increase this. The portion of the proportion of the uh, risky assets, we have the market beta is, or sorry, the portfolio beta is 0.4, then this is 8%. Okay, so again, 60%. What we observe, we, we observe that we increase the investment in the risky assets, the beta increased. And the expected return is increased. In here, we invested 120%. Why it is min minus 20%? As generally speaking, the, the ideal form is 100%. And this is 0%. What it means 120% and minus 20%? Why this? Okay. Yes? No? This is 100%. How it is 120%? Sorry? Um, okay, what, what exactly here in the risk free, there is a short sell. Short sell. Short selling, you are selling the treasury bills by using short selling instruments. We will talk about this in the uh, in investments. Just keep this in mind for the investment costs, why this is minus 20%. Okay, I'm, I'm not asking you about this in, uh, in the introduction of financial management. Okay, uh, we talk about the, the cap M and the security market line. Uh, okay, so next meeting, uh, we will talk about, uh, we take some examples of the expected rate of return and the expected uh, markets. Yes, okay.